Hello, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to tackle the Nichois salad. The Nichois salad comes from Nice, France, uh, in the late 19th and early 20th century. It arrives in the US in around 1920, and uh, you can see a bunch of interplay of, of, of different variations, both in the US and now in France. And uh, we'll talk about a bunch of these. Uh, Nishwa salad is in some ways sort of the ideal summer salad. It's topped with um, tender, crisp uh, French beans, uh, olives, potatoes, anchovies, and tuna fish, among other things. And typically dressed with either a garlic mayonnaise dressing or sometimes even just plain mayonnaise, uh, particularly in the U.S., or uh, like a vinaigrette of some sort. Um, so we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the variations we see of this, as well as uh, put it all together and um, just create a delightful summer salad. So for the main salad, here are the ingredients. We have uh, a lettuce uh, that you can use any kind of salad green you'd like. Um, to this, I'm going to add a little bit of chicory or Belgian endive. Tomatoes. I got this wonderful tricolor uh, tomato combo at the store. Uh, I have two uh, potatoes here that I've cooked until they're just tender, but not like falling apart. Uh, two eggs that I will medium boil. Um, and then some olives. I got two different kinds here. These are black olives um, in oil with uh, uh, provincial herbs. And then I have some um, Kalamata olives. Now, typically in a proper French Nichois salad, you'd use Nichois olives, but uh, I couldn't find any of those at the store. Uh, Americans have tended, uh, at least in the 1920s, to use pimento stuffed green olives, and those will work too, but that's kind of an American uh, thing. Now, we also, are, I'm gonna add a few capers. Um, anchovies and tuna fish. And for the traditional Nichua salad, it is a canned tuna always. For the dressing, I'm going to use a small clove of garlic, mustard, olive oil, and again, this uh, raspberry vinegar that I have here. And uh, we'll make a simple garlic uh, mustard vinaigrette. Um, again, you could do like a mayonnaise type dressing also, that's more typical in the US, um, but it's certainly one option that works. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do this because um, I'm not as big of a fan of the mayonnaise type dressings. And who doesn't like a good, uh, I mean, everybody loves a good vinaigrette, right? So um, that's the dressing. And uh, I'll come back in a few moments after I have uh, medium boiled the eggs. So here I have the um, eggs. They are boiling in water. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to blanch the uh, French beans in that same water. So uh, just go ahead and come in here quickly. And for a good medium boil in the eggs, it's about seven minutes boiling. So. Uh, keep that in mind. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let these sit in the water until they just start to color up. And when they've started to color up, we're going to go ahead and, and, and pull them out. So that's just like a few seconds. And now these have been, the eggs have been in here for about seven minutes. So I will go ahead and start flushing them under cold water. So now it's time to start on the lettuce. Um, I have a new head of lettuce here. Uh, what I'm going to do, as you can see, these outer leaves aren't so great. I'm going to pull off a few of the outer leaves until they all start looking pretty good. That one's okay. That's, that's just purple from that. And then I'm going to hold this here. And I'm going to pull, twist, and pull out the heart. And then I'll do the same thing to get in. Uh, and this is a lot of lettuce. Uh, what I always recommend is that 
it's better if you uh, just um, wash all of your lettuce at once. Then you can put it in a bowl and save it for next time. So there we go. The heart's all out. Now I'm going to wash these. And I'll show you a, a trick to drying. So what I've done here is I've taken some of the lettuce. I think that's at least enough for one uh, for one meal. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to put it on a towel here. I'm going to fold up the corners. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to whirl it around my head a few times. But you could, I mean, basically what's going to happen is same basic principle as the salad spinner. It's going to um, draw all the water moisture out of this um, so that I have dry leaves. It's really important to have dry leaves. Um, so that the dressing will stick to it. So I'll show you uh, the whirling technique next. So basically, as long as you just swing it around, you'll notice that all of the water comes out. The only problem with that is the water goes everywhere. So it's in many ways better to go ahead and get yourself a salad spinner, but now you can see how nice and dry these leaves are. The rest of the leaves here that are still wet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a bowl, just leave them a little bit wet, um, and I'm going to cover the bowl, and that way they'll stay kind of fresh. Um, actually, yeah, just slightly damp. Um, I will shake them off again, but I'll put them in the bowl and, and that'll be good. And so now it's time to compose the salad. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some... Uh, lettuce. I'm going to tear it up into decent sized chunks. And in the middle of this I'm going to add some chicory. Uh, I like chicory here. It's, it's, uh, it gives some nice uh, contrast and texture and color. It adds a little bitterness, so if you really don't like bitter things, maybe maybe skip that one. But, um, as I say, I really enjoy it. So here we have a nice base to our salad. And like most entree salads, we're going to carefully compose this um, so that it kind of looks very nice from the top. And here's my, my lettuce space, my green space. So now we're going to compose the salad, and we're going to do it uh, starting with the bulkiest ingredients and work our way in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by adding uh, a nice handful of these uh, French beans to to the, end, to the to one side here. I've taken some of my tomatoes. I'm going to add them to the other side. Um, I think that's probably enough tomatoes. Maybe take that one off. And then I'm going to take my eggs. Let's see how these came out. Oh, perfect. There's a nice medium. That's This is a nice medium boil. I'm going to go ahead and set some of these on one side. Some of these on the other side. And then cut some of these potatoes. And I like to cut them into pieces that are about that big. 
and I'm going to set them however. So again, this is a good time to just kind of be artistic. We add potatoes, and then once I have the potatoes on there, it's going to be a matter of uh, the fish, uh, the tuna. And I will, um, I will show you my preference to handling the tuna. If you're getting it from a can like this, which is fine, uh, look for nice big chunks you can pull out like that. Maybe put that in the middle and just kind of flake it a bit. You can do that again. Again, it's fine to use canned tuna. We just try to put it into nice big kinds of flakes. And the little bits we can put back because we can, we can use for something else. You can pay a lot more for tuna that's in um, sort of larger chunks. Um, so now we have the basic foundation done. Next we will add the olives and we'll add the anchovies and a few capers. So the thing about these final ingredients is that they all add a lot of salt. So you don't want to add too much. I'm going to take just a few Kalamata olives. I'm going to put them on one side. I'm going to add some of these black olives elsewhere. Let's put them in, sprinkle a couple of these elsewhere on the salad. And then I'm going to add just a couple of a few capers. Capers are totally optional. A lot of I like to add them because I like to add capers to a lot of stuff, but definitely don't have to add them if you don't want to. And now finally for the anchovies, which I will do in the next segment. Now of the anchovies, these are the saltiest of the extra ingredients. So definitely you don't want to add too many, but I'm just going to go ahead and lay a couple of them out in a few different parts here. And I think I'm, I'm just gonna put like maybe four or five fillets. Working with them out of the bottle can be a little bit tricky. So there's four and five. And here is the basic Nishwa salad. The next point, we will make the dressing and dress it. So onto making the salad dressing, I did swap out that garlic clove with one that's just a little smaller. And I've gone ahead and I've chopped it pretty fine. But there's one more thing I'm gonna do before I add it to the salad dressing, and that's that I'm going to crush it. So if you have a nice large bladed knife, you can kind of take the garlic, move it over kind of near the edge of the cutting board, and then just <clears throat> smash it. And that's going to make it uh, release its flavors faster. Um, and then I'm going to make a much smaller amount of dressing this time, so I'm going to make it in this little um, glass here. So. Garlic, some Dijon mustard, and last time I made a lot more, so I put kind of a big amount in. This time I'm going to add just a little bit. One of the points of the mustard is that it is a uh, emulsifier, and so it will hold the dressing together. Then 
I'm going to add olive oil. So in here I have added a small um, crushed chopped loaf of uh, sorry head of uh, sorry clove of garlic, a maybe a small spoonful of um, mustard, and some olive oil. The um, the olive oil is of or the mustard is of course an emulsifier. Then we'll add the olive oil. Sorry, the mustard and that might, sorry the vinegar and then i'm going to seal it hard with my hand and i'm just going to shake you can also put this in a um in a bowl and use a whisk but you'll see that it just comes out nice here and it should be a very nice salad dressing for this So now we have here the basic salad again, topped with the beans, eggs, potatoes, tuna, tomatoes, uh, olives, uh, added a few capers to this one, um, anchovies. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and dress it. Just going to, uh, you don't ever want to overdress a salad. Um, I've tasted this dressing and I kind of like how sort of light and playful the garlic along with the vinegar is. So I'm very happy with this. But this is a fair bit of salad, so I'm gonna add a fair bit. Um, make sure to get the potatoes well coated, especially because the potatoes don't have so much flavor themselves and same with the um, eggs. And there we'll have our salad. So a couple finishing notes here. Um, the traditional Nishwa salad is again preserved tuna. Um, for example, similar to what you get in a can. Uh, it, over here in Europe, you have a lot of uh, focus on what they call fish conserves. So pickled herring, um, canned herring, canned mackerel. Uh, canned tuna, that sort of thing. And it's a fairly big piece of uh, European cuisine generally. Um, this salad is no exception. A lot of uh, sort of upscale chefs uh, like to try to do like a seared uh, but raw in the middle tuna fish um, steak. That isn't exactly uh, traditional in this case, but it does work and it can be very nice. Um, you can also play around with the toppings and the dressings a little bit. Uh, vinaigrettes are not uncommon. You can also see sometimes people doing mayonnaise-based dressings, like a garlic mayonnaise or even just a straight mayonnaise, uh, although that's more of an American thing. Um, different olives can give different um, stuff, uh, different uh, character. So instead of Nishwa olives, you could add, for example, um, green olives with pimentos or, or stuff like that. And so here we have the Nishwa salad. Now I've gone ahead and garnished this one with some freshly chopped chives. They also add a little bit of um, uh, onion flavor to go with the garlic of the dressing. And this is a really delightful salad. Go ahead and try it here. Like the cop salad, this is a salad of great contrast. You have the salt from the anchovies along with the um, sort of acid from the dressing. It all comes together really nicely. It's quite delicious. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, hope you are inspired to make uh, similar salads in the future. This is uh, this is definitely one of those salads I will probably come back to in later videos with other um, variations. For example, the modern uh, seared tuna steak uh, nishwa, or or some other variations as well. Um, 
it's a very, very versatile salad and a, a wonderful accompaniment for the summer. So um, until next week, see you later. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments.